Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Yeah. Hello. Today's session, we will just start the introduction to PLC and DCS industry. All right. Uh, before we start the session, I would like to know what are your expectations from this training. Uh, before we just jump into the session, just wanted to understand from you all, uh, what are your expectations from this training? Uh, actually, uh, I have experience with the PLC programming, but I need to know about the more like I need the real world experience because whenever I go to the any company interview, so okay. I can't able to track every situations like they are asking me about the real world experience. I, I have uh, done with one project the okay. based on ETP. Okay. But, you know, I can't uh, explain everything about a whole system. So I just need to know know about the more detail uh, detailing in the control system okay okay all right see uh, to you. answer to your question and to and to uh, uh, give the picture to everyone this this particular training on plc and dcs which i would be taking for the next five weeks will be touching upon uh, the basic principles of dcs and plc until the industry application level when you tell it plc it applies to almost all the industries to name a few it it applies to robotics it applies to food and beverage industry it applies to thermal power plant it applies to solar plants and water plants as well so what we will do is we will uh, stick Strong, we will strongly build our basics uh, st uh, starting from how do you how do we uh, measure the real time parameters what are the industrial standards how do you do a logic and how do you implement it got it uh, yes 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 hey, I, uh, I have a question please go ahead um, does this apply to the uh, pharmaceutical industry as well right okay good yeah so uh, today's session will be just the introduction covering about the uh, whole uh, uh, giving an overview of what is it we are going to happen. Then we will take it further. Right. Thank you. OK. As I said, objectives will be uh, what are the engineering activities that is actually going in an automation industry. Can you please give an example of uh, any kind of automation that you incur in your day to day life? Um, controls of our water purification system, uh, building management system. Right. Et cetera. As you've uh, quoted about the water purification HVAC system, system. Let, me, uh, let me start with an example of how the seawater or uh, a reverse osmosis plant can be controlled. Okay. For a reverse osmosis plant, what is it they do? They take the seawater as inlet and give the purified water, right? Right. So, there is a process that is inbuilt in that. Okay, there is a seawater intake where you collect the seawater and say, for example, you keep in a tank. Okay, when you collect the seawater and keep in a tank, what do you essentially measure in that? You got to measure what is the level that, that you've already collected or and what is the quality of the seawater? Maybe uh, those two things you will measure. Yeah, pressure also. Right. So uh, what are the two parameters, physical parameters that you can relate to? One is the level tra level and second is the quality of water. To just start with a very basic example, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you say level, uh, or how do you measure the level in a tank? So, you use, oh. Sorry. You can use a uh, pressure sensor. That's like a level indicator. Uh, you got to use a level transmitter, right? Yeah. A uh, level mm -hmm. transmitter, maybe ultrasonic type or pressure type or whatever. So just measuring a level transmitter, 
will give you a value that that may not be readable or that may not be understood by the computer okay yes it's not about just zeros and ones it's about the standards that it can talk to different system okay so first thing is we are measuring a physical variable with a sensor and at the end we have to make it as a readable value okay so there comes the industrial standard when you measure a physical parameter for example level you got to convert it to a 4 to 20 milliamps or any other industrial standard protocol got it yes okay. so uh, from there the uh, you give to a controller or a um, or a device or an instrument uh, what do you call it? or an electronic intelligent built in module which which is named as dcs to dcs or plc whatever to make it a readable value and present it to the users got it so basically you are measuring a real time parameter and give it to a computer where you can read as simple as that so first is the level and second thing is the water quality maybe um what are the water qualities that you uh, that you had come across so far like uh, what is a when you say it's a quality of water what are the sensors that you will have you might have a conductivity sensor ph exactly uh, very good yeah uh, how do you think they are uh, they they have uh, okay let's not talk about at least today let's not talk about how the ph sensor will work what is the value that a ph sensor will show it will show from 0 to 7 ph right i'm sorry can you repeat that see when when a ph sensor reads a value okay it gives a a uh, value in terms of 0 to 7 or 0 to 14 ph correct yes so that that's the value that we will ex expect from the uh, ph sensor or the conductivity sensor okay so for, so for that to uh, give it as a, a 4 to 20 milliamps which is actually readable in any plc or dcs we follow industrial standards okay so once we measure these two there will be a process that will convert the sea water into a usable water or a drinking water okay so that process may involve um purification schemes or uh, ro skits you put some reagents you put a dosing system and then take it to the dcs so in this whole process you got to automate uh, the amount of water that you want to the uh, the time level or the time limit that you will need to and you got to protect your own suppose if you are setting a water purification plant for your home or for a small industry you got to measure at what time what input should come what time what output should go what is the quality of water that you deliver so once you have all this key performance indicators in hand there was days when it was very difficult for the manual manual operators to do 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 it without the help of computers or an automation so that is where this dcs and plc started helping out and the same philosophy or the same kind of uh, uh, application is happening in lot of industries for example if you have an industrial robot and you want to automate it basically you will measure uh, for example if you have a two two arm robot you got to measure the degree of movement maybe the proximity sensors and you got to convert to 4 to 20 milliamps and take it to the uh, uh, plc similarly uh, when you when you just narrow it down at the physical uh, physical controls level you for example if you have a motor okay and motor or a drive which you got to control can you name few signals that you will connect from the motor to operate the motor maybe you can start with start and stop hello hello matthew yes i just asked a question 
like if you have a drive to control what are the signals that you will have to uh, think about while controlling a drive when controlling what a drive suppose you have a motor to oh, i'm sorry it's um having trouble hearing uh, i think you need a current signal or voltage signal hello yes i'm here oh uh, yeah yeah you need a current signal and voltage signal come again no your voice is not proper uh you need a voltage signal and current signal right so uh, uh that will become your see there are two signals in this uh, plc one is digital and second is analog okay when you say analog it will be analog input output digital input and output and sometimes you have to measure the temperatures also okay so th those are the signals that comes to the plc okay yes okay so um if we start talking it will go in a uh, very broad discussion so let me take it to the introduction and then we will plan okay 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 uh okay uh, with this i uh, as i have asked a question what is the process variable that we will normally measure what is a plc actually used for suppose if you go for an interview in a company okay suppose you go for an interview in a, a company like siemens or abb or schneider the very basic question at least when i interview candidates what is the very basic question that that comes is why do you want a plc what plc is going to help you okay there are four things that plc can give you first is measurement manipulation control and monitoring okay okay and uh, uh, when you say when you when you do all this measurement manipulation control and monitoring what is that you are achieving there has been days where the plants were running without plc and dcs so what is that you are achieving hello? you are actually hello achieving... hello 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 we're here yeah yeah someone else said something anybody wants to tell something or can i go ahead i oh, can go ahead. i think it was some worries let's just let the conversation right so um uh, dcs when when you come for any interview or uh, when you are facing an interview with an industry the first basic question that they ask us what how does plc is going to help an industry may it be any industry may it be a paint or food or power or water what is that it actually does is there are four things that is measurement manipulation control and monitoring okay you have 10 different devices 10 different uh, um Ten different process to control, and it's because of all the very uh, human error or the manual error. There has been days when the plants has been incurring lot of losses or the efficiency has been going slow. The first aim of a PLC and DCS is to improvise or if we give more efficiency to the process by precisely measuring, manipulating, control, and intelligent way of monitoring when you say intelligent way of monitoring you got to give alarms you got to give reports you got to give uh, a trend analysis modern analytics tool all the sophisticated tools has been built in the plc or the computer control scada themselves to do all this to improve the efficiency of any kind of plant that you are coming up to okay so as we have taken an example of water treatment plant that we will do an exercise maybe at the later stage you will come to know what how the plc is actually helping you leave out the basic you leave out the engineering activities that is coming from the plc but what the plc and dcs got to deliver for this industry 
is a very precise measurement when you say measurement there are a lot of instruments that will come into picture you got to talk to those instruments in a standard language and then you got to manipulate the values mani uh, you got to control and monitoring when you say control there are a lot of uh, again there is a uh, uh, logics that has to be written you have to understand the process from the process you have to optimize and then do the logics we will come to one by one later stage but you to give you a broad picture the very plc and dcs came into existence to help any process industry in improvising and efficiency improving the efficiency of the process when you say improving and efficiency increasing the efficiency there are a lot of tools in plc and scada that would help about main thing that you should tell or you should be confident of is the alarm standards industrial alarm standards which help in the operator to visualize the plant in a better way to concentrate on the critical process areas and to efficiently operate the plant got my point Yes. let us start with this very simple control system okay when okay your control okay. becomes simple and when does your control becomes complex okay okay uh you have one day one parameter to monitor okay and you have a very simple process to control okay for example this particular control system you are seeing only to control the air inlet and outlet in a pressure vessel okay to do this uh, what is that you will need is you got to measure the air inflow to the pressure vessel okay you will have a flow sensor basically in the inlet and you will have a flow sensor at the outlet okay the pressure vessel is constructed with its own physical properties like dimension the level that has to be maintained and all that so this particular control system is very simple because you got to control only one parameter and then you got to control the simple process okay somebody uh, can you all sum up uh, or can you all just put your uh, simple thinking process or the thought process to write what what are the parameters let us take three let us make three boxes okay first is what is that you want to control okay hello yes okay i want you guys i want you guys to make three boxes in your notebook or uh, whichever way you are taking notes okay one is measurement okay and the second box would be control and third box should be would be uh measurement logics and the Apple. control device got it okay yeah so what is the measurement that is happening here pressure second good second sorry can you repeat the question again I want you guys to make three boxes. One is measurement, logics, and the control. Uh, what is the, what is the measurement that will happen in this simple control system? Uh, air inlet, air outlet. Now, what is that you will measure in air inlet and outlet? Pressure. Okay. All right. Okay. And how do you control? You uh, will find a ladder logic or a programming. to control the inlet and outlet but basically what is that you will measure is the pressure and the air flow okay 
I'm sorry, can you repeat everything? Um, I'm getting a little lost right now. Uh, Matthew, I was just telling, uh, what is uh, what is the physical parameters that you will measure in this simple control system? Yeah, your your flow rates of the air, right? Air flow rate and the air and the pressure, maybe. maybe and the pressure. Air inlet and outlet, which is actually air flow, and second would be the pressure of the pressure vessel. Okay, so you got to okay. have air flow sensors and pressure sensors. Okay. Okay. So, uh, when you say sensors and transmitters, what is the difference between a sensor and a transmitter? Okay. So, the sensor will sense the measurement and then the transmitter transmits it to a, like a system? Okay. Okay. Partially right. So, when the sensor senses something, it is already measuring, right? It is already measuring. What, what, what is the role of a transmitter? These are the questions, uh, these are the basics that any industry would ask you when it comes for an interview. When you want to uh, get yourself acquainted in this industry. Got it. So, uh, when, when you say a measure, if I have a pressure, you, I think everybody should have seen a cycle pump, right? We used to put pressure on the cycle tires. Okay, we got to fill our air in the cycle tires. You got to, you got a pressure gauge there, right? Yes. So, would you call that as a transmitter? I, I don't know. Would you call as a transmitter or a sensor or a gauge? How do you call it? Oh, a gauge? Uh, well, a pressure gauge would be a sensor, right? Yeah, it is just a sensor. It just detects the pressure and gives you a reading then and there, right? So, it is basically, mm -hmm. you call it as a sensor and a gauge. Okay, but when you okay. want to take it to a PLC, okay, you got to have an intelligent electronic device that can read the signal. Got it? So, and that's what the transmitter is? Yeah, that's what the transmitter is. Transmitter is an electronics or the uh, electronics device which could take the signal which has an inbuilt electronics to give you an output, say, in the form of 4 to 20 milliamps or any kind of industrial standard. Okay. So the transmitter, can you say that in more simple terms, what the transmitter does? Come again, Matthew. Can you repeat what the transmitter does? Come again. Can you repeat what the transmitter does? Right, okay. See, uh, the transmitter basically takes the physical signal, okay, and you will have a, a necessary uh, electronics like uh, isolators then amplifiers and give and it gives the output in the form of 4 to 20 milliamps or a TCP IP okay when it so basically the, the tr so basically in simple terms the transmitter converts a physical signal into an electronic signal electronic signal when you you can't just say uh, yeah it's a basically it's, it does that but the transmitter itself uh, means transmitter is like it it has to give it when, you, when it comes for a PLC industry, the transmitter has to give in a, any industrial standard languages. When you say industrial languages, industrial standard languages, it can be either Modbus or it can be a TCP IP or it should be a 4 to 20 milliamps. Got it? Okay. Okay. So, uh, you we have a measurement point and we, we also uh, talk about when you say sensor, it has sent something and it's going to tell us in some standard language that I can understand. Got it? Hello? Yes. Okay. So, now we have the measurement signals with us. We have a pressure, in, uh, pressure uh, signal and we have a flow signal. And we got to control the output pressure of the vessel and that is how the air outlet is also controlled. So, maybe you will say that if the inlet pressure is more or the pressure is less, you got to open or control a valve. Okay. Let us take a simple example. If your tire, uh, cycle tire is of less pressure, you got to put more pressure, right? You, you got to pump more air, right? So, you are just measuring the pressure here in this case and then giving more air to that okay so basically you are measuring and then controlling the level of the uh, pressure vessel for that you can relate to the cycle tire 
and then uh, giving adequate input to come to that level okay okay I am just uh, sticking to the very basics because this particular class will be a very basic class to make you comfortable with the terms and terminologies that we will uh, uh, we will use in the following classes. So you will also get comfortable in the uh, industrial standards. Got it? Okay. So now we are going to design a control loop. Okay. What do you think a valve is going to do in a control system? What 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 can you name a valve at? Mamta? Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Are you listening? I can't able to hear properly. Are you listening? What you said? yes okay so uh, just a question to all of you like uh, you are seeing a control loop in front of you right yes okay so can you name uh, from this loop that you're seeing can you name what is a sensor what is the actuating device and uh, what is the controls here very simple question i think everybody should be able to do it just for your hello yeah so the in the control loop you are seeing uh, what is the primary sensing element and wh so what do you think the valve is going to do Temperature is a sensor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, two is electrical signals. Okay. And uh, pressure is also sensor. Valve is actuator. Valve is what? Actuator. Actuator. Okay. So. Uh, See, uh, you, you are measuring a temperature and taking it as an electrical signal and giving it to a PID controller loop and then you are converting it to a pressure uh, pressure control signal you are giving to valve. Okay. It's very simple as that. As simple as that. Okay. With this thing, um, when you just take it to a industrial application. Okay. I will just give you a very small example. You got to control a boiler drum level okay everybody is knowing what is boiler right yes okay. so uh, with this basic only we are going to build up the complex logic of boiler drum control got it Okay, with this with this simple control loop, in the following class we will take it to a complex boiler drum control building logics. Okay, so in this basic sensor is temperature. Okay, we are going to measure the temperature of a boiler. Okay, so uh, when you say temperature, uh, how do you measure a temperature? A thermometer. Thermometer. Okay. So, uh, uh, thermometer has its some limitations that we will discuss in the later. Thermometer can uh, can be a RTD signal. Okay. 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 So you you will measure temperature with the RTD signal and it will give you an RTD input. Okay. It will not be so. It is going to be analog or digital. It's going to be uh, analog. 
temperature measurement is going to be analog but you cannot take it to the analog code directly it's it's going to be an rtd signal okay you are taking an rtd signal to the loop controller okay when you say you take a rtd signal from the temperature uh, device sensor which is an rtd uh, to the controller what what is the physical layer that you will uh, have you got to take it to a, through a cable right yes so what is that cable would be uh clues uh, uh, means uh, when you say cables it will be like a uh, uh, signal cable power cable control cable okay that is another thing in the plc when you take a rtd signal from a temperature device to the loop controller the cable would be an rtd triad cable okay yeah okay from temperature you are going to take to a rtd cable and and you cannot just give the temperature signal to the plc card directly there is some engineering practices followed in in a plc panel okay when you when it comes to hardware you got to terminate and then take it okay so anybody has come across the word marshalling no no right so again this is this is again this kind of engineering practices any i at least as an interviewer or as an plc expert i would uh, i will expect the candidates to know all this terminologies you are now understanding what is a gap in the engineering practices and academics right yeah okay so uh, you are measuring a temperature you are having an rtd signal and you are going to take it to a uh, maybe you you if you just imagine you are going to take it to a uh, electronic device okay you cannot just take it and connect it to a electronic device like how do you plug in a um, tv power in and power out okay Again, there also you are connecting some signals through physical wires okay you cannot just plug in like how do you plug to your computer because in computer the, you are uh, in in tv or computer you are having only two signals but for a control system you will have thousands and 1500 or even 10000 odd signals so there is a standard practice of measure you, you had measured the temperature now there is a standard practice of how do you take it to the panel so there comes the marshalling okay you you had measured the temperature and you have taken through the rtd cable and you will terminate in a panel maybe i will show the practices and the pictures in the later classes you will terminate in a panel with the use of something called terminal blocks okay got it tb will act as a marshalling point where it will electrically isolate the signal from the plc cabinet to the field maybe the electronics and the field is getting isolated through marshalling okay got it yes okay uh, marshalling cabinet we will talk about the marshalling cabinet and the roles of the marshalling cabinet in the uh, in the forthcoming classes but typically this is the philosophy that is followed so now we have come to a plc cabinet okay in this loop controller you can envisage in the plc loop controller okay okay so typically what what are the cards that would be present in plc is
what's this question no it's not a question i'm just explaining okay Digital output card. Analog input. Analog output. And RTD cards. RTD cards are basically for measuring the temperature. Okay. So uh, these are the cards that would be present in a PLC system for measuring the physical parameters. Okay. And in the loop controller, you write a logic. See, for example, if the temperature of the boiler drum, okay, if the temperature is more, okay, when you say the temperature of a boiler is more, what can be the reasons for the temperature to be higher? Guys, getting bored? No, no. Are, are you, uh, uh, means, uh, just grasping the point, temperature is measured, we have come to the PLC cabinet, and there is some electronics cards that will be arranged. Okay? Yes. Right. Um, Next, we talk about boiler drum. When you say boiler temperature is higher, what can be the reasons for the temperature to be higher? Maybe the furnace uh, temperature may be higher. So, you got to reduce the input igni ignition temperature, right? You got to decrease the ignition temperature. So, you are inputting something, you are going to control it, you are going to control through the valve. Okay? So, this is a place you are going to control, okay? So, you have measured the temperature and you felt that the temperature is more by a particular value. So, this loop controller will, the purpose of the PLC or controller is to say what is, what percentage or what level the temperature is higher or lower, okay? So, that difference we are taking, we are converting it to a proportional pressure signal, okay? So, this is basically an I2P converter. Okay, the one that I am showing here, here, from the loop controller, you will have an I2P converter that converts the difference in the signals or the requirement to a proportional pressure signal and that pressure signal goes to the wall for opening or closing. Okay, so what is that we have done is we have measured the temperature, we found the temperature to be higher by say for example 10 percentage it's just a very layman example we found the temperature to be higher by 10 percentage that deduction has been that intelligent has been done by this loop controller this particular 10 percentage has been converted to an electrical signal and through a card through a card it it went that current has went to the i2p converter i2p converter is nothing but current to pressure converter that particular pressure converter has been given to the the difference in the uh, temperature value has been this difference in the temperature signal has been converted to electrical signal this electrical signal is going to give a proportional pressure signal for the controlling of the walls okay Guys, yes, okay. So, um, what this I2P converter is, is again an industrial, uh, industrial standard device which should give the pressure signal for operating of the wall in again any standard industry only. Okay, 
when you want to open or close a wall what is that you have to give you have to give maybe if you just think of uh, the tap that you open every day okay every day we should have been opening tap right what is that you are giving you are giving a turning force right the turning force will be given by this electrical signal okay the turning force of say for example if it's going to come as a 4 to 20 milliamps it will come through a analog output right this analog output for example it will be calibrated from 0 to 100 percentage narrator magnifier what is that matthew sorry that was my computer okay make your computer easy oh, for This proportional pressure signal is, is being given to the wall. Okay. So when you say proportional pressure signal, you are converting. See, for example, if the temperature is higher by 10 percentage, you have to lower the furniture temperature by 3 percentage to compensate for the higher temperature. So the, that particular difference is being converted to pressure signal and is being given to this wall. Okay okay so uh, let's let's keep our understanding very simple and strong with this control loop can you please sum up or uh, can any one of you take the role of summing up what is the what is that we have envisaged here and when it comes for industry what are the terminologies that would come because this would help you in progressing as a better plc engineer Guys, yes, Mamta? Hello. 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 
the next thing is we will see how the control system has evolved uh, evolved for evolved from its invention okay first is we had a pneumatic control and the second generation was relay logic and now we are using plc dcs and sophisticated scala systems okay this we have talked enough uh, how do we do a simple control system hello yes yeah yeah okay uh, we have as we had known the terminologies i am not uh, going through this thing very detailly because we will take up through a simple logic building later but uh, as far as uh, today's introduction class is concerned i want you guys to be comfortable with the uh, scheme and the terminologies that you, that would come up like plc panel marshalling analog signals 4 to 20 milliamps industrial standard protocols like tcp ip and then and then i to p converters and electrical and pressure signals got it yes how do you identify a dcs you will when when you call your system as dcs when there is a functional distribution of controllers for example in a power plant you will have a boiler control you will have steam control you will have turbine protection you will have a coal coal handling so you will ha you are having a geographical distribution and functional distribution of controllers so that is where the complex control system is coming to picture got it yes and then you will have uh, suppose if your the whole plant is spread for about 1 km you will bring all the field parameters to one control room for monitoring okay or control so you are giving a centralized control and monitoring provision in the main control room this is how you will envisage the um, distributed control system functionalities and with that with the geographical and functional distribution you will also have status monitoring historical trending of various parameters sequence of events alarm and event reporting and then you will also have a fault diagnostics and the, these are when you when you say measure manipulate control and monitor you will relate to these parameters of the dcs
okay now we will see what is a component this is the actual uh, picture of the installation in the site the, uh, the as i've told you controller io modules interface module hmi communication and field terminal units these are again terminologies or the components that would come in a plc installation okay okay see these are the industrial applications and some modules Uh, this is a typical system architecture. This is a typical system architecture of a DCS. You will have process IOs. You are getting connecting to an IO card, and this is the controller. And you are going to control to the servers and the clients. This this particular thing that you are seeing is the SCADA portion of a DCS. You are going to have means when you when you are just seeing you should also envisage the components that would be involved you are seeing io card you are seeing controller when when you see this these two lines are the network or the network lines where the controller and computers are going to talk to each other okay this physical world physical parameters are going to get monitored in this computer so what is the language that it's talking to us from controller to the server it's going to talk through ethernet or tcp ip okay from the field side we are taking the signals and giving to a marshalling cabinet from the marshalling cabinet we are going to give to system cabinet where your io cards will be mounted from from the system you are taking through a computer which is going to come through a coaxial cable of 10 mbps and then the operator working station like where the uh, centralized monitoring and control is happening okay so today we saw the introduction to plc and dcs and its uh, broad terminology simplification and where and finally we saw a typical system architecture for a dcs okay so um, in the next class we will go in detail of individual measuring and monitoring and we will start building the logics now i want you guys to interpret the terminologies and the standards that has been discussed and come prepared for the next class with the basic understanding principles of this plc industry maybe at least a very basic like analog signal digital signal and its interface is that okay for you so um i want to know from you how was the introduction today like uh, are you uh were you able to get something new or you able to correlate something better fine uh thank you guys i think we will stop here and we will continue with the practical application sessions from the next class is that fine with you i saw a lot of people not there i think they left new to network issues but still i will meet you guys the next week